Slurper T for a go. Okay, another day, another Maker Advent, the penultimate Maker Advent of 2023. And what do we got on the bench today? A cheap yellow display. This is brought to you by Brian Locke fantastic piece of work that he's done on this to collate all the different resources for this cheap yellow display so yeah it is a cheap yellow display it's about 15 pounds roughly the same in dollars uh, i got one with a lovely box and a case for it i put the case on it's like yeah looks nice brian locks resources i'll put a link down below awesome it collects everything you need to learn this board so from simple basic stuff to make stuff appear on the screen flashing lights etc all the way to, hey, you can play old arcade games on this. You can play Gallagher on this, Frogger, Dig Dug. You can plug in Wiimotes to it. It's awesome. Right, what is it? It's really an ESP32. It's a dev board from ESP32, but it's got everything you need on it to just build stuff quickly. As Brian says in the video, again, link down below. It just has all the connections on, ready to go for you to do some cool projects. No soldering. You've got a screen. You've got a speaker connection. You've got external GPIO, not many GPIO pins, but you've got some. Let's, let's flip it over. Micro SD card connection. There's your SP32. Speaker terminals, GPIO terminals. These aren't STEM QT compatible, but I reckon you could put STEM QT devices on this with an I2C connection. It'll be on there somewhere. RGB LED. But the thing that sells this is resistive touchscreen. It has a screen built in, SPI connection, and you can just write to it really easy. You can even play video on it. As long as you drop video resolution down enough, you can play a, a good constant stream of video. There's even a demo for this for radio player, for streaming digital radio. What have I done with it? Right, this is why this video's late today. And this isn't this YouTuber. I've had so much fun. Right, let's go to face cam so you can see what I mean. I mean this, this isn't just me like, I had YouTube moments. I had so much fun with this device. I just had to play with it all day and that sort of thing. No, I've been playing with this for about four hours. Admittedly, the first hour of that was learning how to use it because I've not touched Arduino IDE properly for a while. Not, not not for a project, but I had great fun with this and I went a bit overboard with the demo. I could have just done text on the screen and went, hello world, but no. One, I wanted to show you some cool stuff to do. And two, I was having fun. So I'll show you what I was doing. So overhead again. So now I've got a touch screen ready to go. You even get a stylus in the pack, a Nintendo DS stylus, very nice. As I say, it's resistive, it's not very precise, but I've got a demo on here where if I touch any part of the screen, it's gonna show some text on the screen. It's also gonna light up the LED on the back of the board, but because that's hard to see, I thought, hey, and this is why it took a bit longer, can I put NeoPixels on this? Because as we know, I like messing around with NeoPixels. Yeah, yeah, you can. With that GPIO breakout, straight into a RGB LED board here. It's NeoPixels, it's not NeoPixels, it's a clone. So it was cheap from AliExpress. Eight of them, Adafruit software's on the board, all been programmed. So I've got some NeoPixel code on there that just says, okay, do this. So when I press the screen, it's gonna play a color sequence. The color sequence is matched behind the board as well. So if I press screen now, flashing lights, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. And you can see it's lighting up. And if I flip it over, That's why it took a bit longer to get this video out, because I've been messing around with this. Brian says in his video, it, it's a great little board for just picking up and hacking around with, for beginners and people who just wanna get stuff done quickly. I've got loads of ESP32s. Honestly, I have. There you go. That's the tray of, that's a, Brian's board's at the top. I didn't plan that. Um, yeah, ESP32s, esp 8266s ESP32 in a camera. They're cheap, plentiful, easy to hack. What more could you want? This thing, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I'll just go to a capture so you can see what I'm talking about with Arduino IDE. Right, Arduino IDE, this is the new Arduino 2.2.1. That might be out of date actually, but anyway. So easy to do in this. And I know I keep laboring that. It's so easy, but it's easy if it's relative. If you know what you're doing, anything is easy. Physics, easy if you know what you're doing. Rocket science, easy if you know what you're doing. Knitting, Easy if you know what you're doing. I can't knit. Can't do rocket science and I can barely do physics. So Arduino IDE and I just went into preferences. And this is all on Brian's website, on the GitHub page, I should say. Copied the additional boards manager URL into there. Installed the boards. Picked ESP32 dev board, which is what he said to use. Told it what COM port it was on, because I'm on a Windows machine. That'd be a dev port here on uh, Linux, a serial port. Then I followed his 
very basic example of putting stuff on the screen. Installed the correct libraries for touch screens, TFT screens, and then I went a bit overboard, as I said, Adafruit NeoPixel library. This is all my definitions to say where things are, how many what LEDs I've got, how many there are, that sort of thing. The, the usual stuff we'll use for setting up a NeoPixel. I'll put all this code on GitHub and you can download it as part of the Maker Event 2023 download. And then I'm just saying, okay, create a serial interface, set the pins up, so red, green, blue, that's for the RGB LED on the back. Set the NeoPixel up. This isn't a tutorial video, this is more of me saying, this is cool, go and buy one. Uh, set up SPI, start the display, set the display to black, so it's just a black screen. Then I'm setting up the screen, so X, the width of the screen, 320, divided by 2 for the center. Y, I want to be 100 pixels down. And then set to font 4. Font 4 is a chunky font, it's a big font. Then it's just saying, okay, write stuff to the screen. So move down 24 lines, or 24 pixels, I should say. 24 lines would be huge. Set the colors to red. Set the text to touch screen to start. Then turn off all of the LEDs in the RGB LED that's on the back. You've got to set them all high because they're active low. So high is off and low is on, if you get me. Some serial stuff that I've not used, I've just left it in there because this is Brian's example. And then this is the bit that I've heavily butchered, where I've just messed around with the code. So I said, right, okay, fill the screen black, text is now white, repeating the X and Y coordinates, so dead center of the screen, big font, loop, same again, if the screen is touched, it's going to get the points of where it's been touched, a position, a pixel position. I don't need that, but it's going to print it to serial anyway. That's fine. Got a for loop that's going to iterate four times. It's going to go flashing lights, then go red text. Draw that as red text. Then we're going to turn the red LED on. Remember, low means on. I know, it got me a couple of times. Green's off, blue's off. Then I turn on the NeoPixels. 255, zero, 00 means red 255, so on, full. Zero off, zero off for green and blue. 200 millisecond delay. Then I turn all the LEDs off on the back. Delay for 100 milliseconds. Then it repeats the process, just going to green text green LED on the back, green NeoPixel, 200 millisecond wait, then happy holidays, and you, you're getting the gist here. Basically I've got coloured text that appears on the screen, and it changes colour as the loop goes around. That colour is reflected in the colour of the pixel on the back, and the NeoPixels that are external. So I, I rarely say go out and buy this now because, you know, I'm not here to sell stuff to you. I'm here to show you some cool stuff. I'm not a salesman. If you've got some Christmas money, get one. It's 15 quid. I'll put links down below. In fact, I'll use Brian's link because his GitHub page has links to all the places that are selling this particular board. I've enjoyed myself. It's a ready to go screen with ESP32. You can connect it to Wi-Fi. Brian's got examples where he's got F1 um, scores coming down live. He's got Spotify playlists appearing on the screen. You can see what tracks are coming on. It's a good bit of fun, and it all works with the Arduino IDE. Being an ESP32, I'd be interested to know if it works on MicroPython as well, because you can get MicroPython ESP32. I've got quite a few boards that do that. That'd be interesting as well. But the Arduino IDE is pretty simple in this case. But that's day 23 done. I'll see you on day 24 for the final episode. See you later.